Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship in the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study of the rise of false prophets and false teachers, part of our Charting the End Times series. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, send those by email to BBFOhio at ProtonMail.com or mail your letter along with any check or money order contributions to support this ministry to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. You can also make donations at bbfohio.com using the PayPal donation button. We now begin our study of the rise of false prophets and false teachers. This is part one. Of our two. current events update. That gives everybody time to time settle in, too. I just thought this was hilarious. You're telling me I finished fourth behind a communist, a gay man, and a fake Indian? <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. I like to have that put on a bumper sticker. But our real uh, Curvin's update is uh, about, not necessarily because, about Starbucks, but what they're doing. Starbucks is now funding child abuse and endangerment. It's really amazing what's going on in, in uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. But Is that wonderful news? Yes. <laughs> Starbucks partners with organization promoting sex changes for minors. Mm. Now, a lot of you know I stopped drinking Starbucks about what three or four years ago and I loved Starbucks and I mean their coffee I'm not talking about all the frou-frou stuff you know I know people who have gone to Starbucks for years and they say they get they love Starbucks coffee but they never buy the coffee <laughs> I loved the coffee it was like a buck fifty is the cheapest thing on their menu and they started going uh, turning against Israel they started funding uh, Planned Parenthood they started uh, attacking the Second Amendment right to own and bear arms, and now this. And it's just amazing. We, I don't, you know, if I ever see somebody with a star, that's a McDonald's probably, but if you see as a Starbucks cup, I don't get on them and I don't condemn them or anything like that. But I do, t I tell people, I just, I cannot buy a Starbucks anymore. I just can't feel right doing it. Starbucks has launched a new transgender-friendly commercial and campaign that will benefit a controversial British charity that supports overturning the age limit when children can receive cross-sex hormones. It's called the hashtag Watch Your Name campaign. You'll see it on um, social media. And it features an ad showing a transgender boy, which means it's a girl being called Gemma by friends and acquaintances until arriving at Starbucks where an employee asks, and what's your name? James, the transgender boy who is a girl, answers. So the employee then writes James on the cup. This is a commercial they're showing from Starbucks. And uh, that's not all. There's more. We discovered that they found Starbucks stores to be a safe place where their new name was accepted and they could be recognized as who they are. But the hashtag What's Your Name campaign has drawn criticism for Starbucks' partnership with Mermaids, is the name of this organization. It's a London-based charity that, quote, supports gender-diverse children and young people until their 20th birthday. According to its website, Starbucks hopes to raise at least 100,000 pounds. I don't know what that translates into dollars, but that's a lot of money for this organization. And still, there's more. Basing it on age is completely inappropriate, Susie Green, head of Mermaids, told The Guardian in 2016. Quote, we believe it should be in line with the young person's maturity and their ability to understand what's involved and the implications of what treating and not treating are, end quote. The effects of cross-sex hormones can be irreversible. And doctors in the UK who support the current policy say children, when they mature, might grow up to regret taking hormones. The fact is, most all of them do. 
and there's a lot of them now wanting to transition back and they some of them can't and there's a high suicide rate among these poor people because they did this to themselves national review that's a magazine you may have heard of um, national reviews madeline kearns who was raised in scotland said that this organization mermaids quote peddles dangerous nonsense to vulnerable children and families using the ultimate emotional blackmail of suicide see i mentioned that the high suicide rates and what they they blame the parents and blame people who try to tell them not to do it instead of blaming the transgenderism and the change itself kearns notes that this susie green from mermaids quote took her own gender confused son jack to thailand when he was 16 to have his blankety blank removed a procedure that is illegal in britain and now is illegal in thailand so she did this to her own son and where it happened is now even illegal they can't you can't even do it now and uh, kearns wrote uh, before this surgery, Jack had gone on puberty blockers at age 13, which stunted his development. Now, folks, that is child abuse. Oh, yeah. And that is becoming a big thing in, in America. You remember back when people said, oh, gay marriage will never happen. Do you remember that? Because I do. I'm old enough to remember that because it was only a few years ago. And now we're trying to warn people that they're coming for the children and people say, ah, that's not going to happen. Going way back to when Jenny and I were first married, there was a caribou up near where Kroger's. We loved their coffee. We loved that place. And we stopped going because we well, last two or three times we were there, there was nothing but transgendered and cross-dressing and queers and everything all around. And we're like, done. And uh, that was... Going, it'd be 15 years this November, won't it? Well, we are mocked for telling you this truth, and we're going to continue to tell you and warn you that the sodomites want children. They can't um, procreate in their relationships, but a lot of them go ahead and make arrangements and then have their own children, but they're also adopting <clears throat> and the, Donald Trump, your president, that uh, all the wicked people in this country hate, they hate him because one of the things he's doing is he is protecting Christian adoption agencies. Under Obama, they would not allow Christian adoption agencies to refuse to hand children over to sodomites. And Donald Trump's administration is protecting those agencies from having to do that and many other things that he's he and his administration but it's as it was in the days of lot we were told in the bible but remember back i've showed you this before genesis 19 4 i read genesis numerous times can't tell you how many times before i noticed what it says in genesis 19 4 remember when they were coming around trying to get the angels that were in lot's house it said but before they lay down the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And when the Bible talks about young, it's talking about kids. That's Sodom. And so the spirit of that uh, event is the same spirit in the LGBTQ movement in America today. Same spirit. And Jesus said, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot when it comes to the end times. When it comes to right before the... Uh, if you read Luke 17, you, we're going to be in Matthew 24. Those end time events, what's going to happen right before all that blows up? It'll be like this as it was in the days of Lot. So that's a current events update, and let's go ahead and pray before we get into our Bible study. Father, we thank you for this time we can spend in your word. We thank you. You've given us 
so much in this book to help us to be able to discern the signs of the times, to live our lives that are pleasing to you, everything we need in order to live our lives as Christians. And it all begins with that gospel message, the gospel that saves. And so we pray for so many of our friends and family and loved ones who are getting caught up in this sodomite spirit of the age, the spirit of Antichrist. And we just pray you can use us, Lord, that we might be able to live the example of a life handed over to you and that we might be able to speak the truth in love whenever the opportunity uh, presents itself. And that's why we want to learn your book to become better vessels of honor for your sake and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, we've done a series of messages on the cha charting the end times is what we call it. Some of them actually involve charts. And if you go to bbfohio.com, all those charts are available free of charge. You can download them, print them, give them away, whatever you want to do. But uh, this study, we're going to look at the rise of false prophets and false teachers. How many of you see this and it makes you angry? When you see these teachers on TV and you see these false cults and you just think, oh, it's how disgusting. You know, they, they, most of these guys, not all of them that are up here, but most of these guys up here on the screen make merchandise of people, and they, they're in it for filthy lucre. But even the ones who don't make a lot of money in the millions or whatever, they still thrive on the power, the authority that they get to exert over people. But... You can temper your anger if you understand that the Bible tells us that in the last days, just like we talked about Sodom and the day, as it was in the days of Lot, in the last days, we should expect to see this. We should see the false teachers and the false prophets just explode in number. And they are. And if you're not aware of how bad it's getting... I'm not telling you to spend a lot of time and effort finding out all this information, but it, don't, it won't take you long if you just do a little research. You'll find out, even at Ohio State University, there are hundreds, hundreds of false cults and religions just on that one campus. Hundreds. And a lot of them involve guru-type leaders, False prophets and false teachers, just like we were warned about in the Scripture. And Jesus warned us of what to watch for in the last days. So if you got your Bibles in Matthew 21, uh, 24, I'm sorry, in verse 21, we're just going to read from verses 21 through 25. But you can pick up Matthew 24 anytime you want to, and you can get a glimpse of what the world is supposed to look like when Jesus raptures us out of here because it's right after the rapture that everything in Matthew 24 tells us takes place. So you should be expecting these things as we read them in Matthew 24 to be out there in front of you if we're living in the last days, and I believe we are. How many of you agree with that? So beginning in 21, uh, let's read. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. So, 
We want to zero in the focus on that statement in verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's the thing that is really scary about this is that there are people I know who I would have thought were solid Christians and the next thing you know, they're off into these cults and false religions. Johnny? And maybe, maybe, maybe I should wait on this until the Q&A, but do you know exactly what it, what it means by the shortening of the days? Well, uh, we know because of Daniel 9, 24 to 27, that after the confirmation of the covenant, it's going to be seven years. And I believe that's what it's talking about. I think God purposely made it seven years because it's a time so terrible and so dangerous spiritually. And of course, in our Revelation studies with the seals and the vials and the trumpet judgments, we saw just how dangerous it's going to be at the, in, during this time. So that it could have been longer, but God shortens it for that reason and makes it just seven years. So that probably means God's indicating to us that if, if He didn't keep it that short, Probably you would have ended with, would have ended everyone. Total devastation, yeah, that's right. That's right. So what we're reading here, in Matthew 24 in general, will happen immediately after the rapture, but Satan's agenda is already in action. And you, what we also keep in mind, the same thing happened before Jesus came the first time. Before Jesus could be born of a virgin in Bethlehem and fulfill all the Old Testament prophecies, other things had to be set in place. One example, if you read Psalm 22, remember he says, they pierced my hands and my feet. A prophecy in Psalm 22. No one was crucifying people in Psalm, when Psalm 22 was written. So anyone who knew their Bible knew, well, wait a minute, before the Messiah comes, they're going to have to start crucifying people. And sure enough, right when Jesus shows up, Rome starts crucifying people, <laughs> piercing their hands and their feet. And and we could go through we have in the past gone through some of those prophecies that were fulfilled, but in Jesus, but the stage was set before they were fulfilled. And the same thing's true now. There are actually teachers out there saying, you shouldn't be telling people to be looking for this stuff. None of that stuff happens until after the rapture. Mm -hmm. And I just have to use my Greek knowledge and say, baloney. It, it only stands to reason that if we're going to have an antichrist rise up and set up a system where everyone has to have a mark in order to buy, sell, and trade, we should see that system being set up beforehand. That RFID chip, there are people running around town and buying, oh, it's the mark. No, it's not. It's not the mark. You won't accidentally take the mark of the beast. If you're in the tribulation period and you take the mark, it will be an act of worship and submission to the Antichrist. But the RFID chip and all this technology setting up a system for a global economy is all setting the stage. So that's the point as you read these things. And Satan's got a two-tier agenda. False prophecy and false doctrine. If you look at everything setting the stage for the Antichrist, and God is allowing Satan to do these things. If, if you don't understand how that works, go back and read Job. You'll see how this works. And God is allowing Satan to do these things just like God allowed Satan to do things leading up to the first coming of Christ. And he's allowing Satan to do things leading up to the rapture, the great tribulation, the second coming of Christ. And everything falls under these two uh, facets of Satan's agenda. Why? Because it's with false prophecy that he is destroying faith in the Word of God. It is through fraud. How many times have you talked about the rapture in front of somebody who doesn't believe in it? And then you realize the reason they don't believe in it is because of the false prophecies. How, you know, everything from 88 reasons Jesus will return in 1988, 
by a guy named Wisenot, all the way up to Harold Camping. Do you remember that a few years ago? Harold Camping's Jesus is coming back on May 12th, I think it was, and he got it wrong. He said, oops, it's October, <laughs> and he got that wrong. And over and over, these false prophecies, people, first of all, buy into them because what we're going to see in a minute, they lack use and knowledge of the Word of God. And for that reason, they lack discernment. And that's why they fall for it. I mean, we're told in the Bible no one knows the day. <laughs> so you don't even have to really know a lot of Bible to know if someone predicts the rapture, they're wrong. Because God says no one knows the day. And the same thing with false doctrine. What you're seeing going on with Sodom and what you see going on in churches and among Christians and their lifestyle and their doctrine and their, their beliefs when it comes to people rejecting the rapture and people uh, turning on Israel and all this stuff we'll mention again in a little bit, that all falls under false doctrine. Even their sins, the, the wickedness they're committing and they're claiming, I'm a Christian, but I'm a gay Christian. I'm a Christian, but I'm not kidding you. They're, you know, uh, strippers for Jesus and all kinds of ministries out there. And it all comes down to their doctrine. And today we see the stage being set with all these things, in particular false prophecy and false Doctrine setting the stage for the Antichrist. Here's an example. And when I was studying for this, uh, I put my slides together, you know, usually a little, a couple days ahead of time, and then I review them and make changes and this and that. I purposely left a, a blank section, and I wanted to wait till the day we make this study and just see what's in the news. Because it, it happens so often. That you just constantly see this stuff. Last week we were going to be here and um, I would have told you about some guy in Russia who says he's Jesus. And he has thousands of people who are now quitting their jobs and going out and wa walking around in white robes out in the hills of Russia. That was last week. Old news. Old news. Now here's, here's the latest headline. This was on Fox News and Fox website. California pastor who prophesied Kanye West's transformation four years ago predicts this about Trump. And I haven't seen the supposed prophecy about Kanye West, um, but you ever heard the term, the, the old saying, a broke watch is right twice a day? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what explains a lot of these people. Who was the one back in the 60s and 70s, uh, was always in the tabloids, Jean Dixon. And she'd get one right once in a while. I mean, they claim she was right about, I think, JFK's assassination or something like that. But she missed 80%. <laughs> it's like all you have to do is keep predicting things. At some point, you're going to get it right. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, I remember May, it was May 1st, 1965. She, I was in sixth grade. She, had, she had predicted the world would end at 12 o'clock on May the 1st at noon. You know, I think she missed it. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, when you don't know any better, but that's the whole point of tonight's study. Yeah. Is that we don't have to be suckered into this stuff. And we can also help other people. But anyway, uh, regarding this guy, his name is Sean Bowles, B-O-L-Z. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. B-O-L-Z. He's a prominent pastor in Los Angeles. And, um, yeah, that says something probably. But there are a couple of good churches out there, but uh, he's not one of them. Um, but he says, quote, We are all, as humanity, wired to hear from God. Both people to who, let me say it again. Both people who know Jesus and don't know Jesus. Now right there you should know he's a false prophet. You are not naturally wired to hear from God. You are supernaturally wired by a thing called being born again. By, when you're saved, and you know what the wiring is? The indwelling Holy Spirit. And you know how he speaks to you? 
the Bible. So, see, just that easy, just knowing that much of the Bible, what the Bible teaches us, none of us will fall for this. So why do people fall for it? Because they don't. Number one, a lot of them aren't saved. Number two, they can be saved and not growing spiritually, and for that reason, still gullible. But that all is related to number three, they don't know the book. That's really the key to it all. He continues and says, a lot of the way we hear Him is through symbols, signs, and dreams. But we can hear Him in so many different ways. Listen, if you see a sign, you use symbols, you try to interpret your dreams, the only way you know anything that comes to your mind through that is true is if it's confirmed by the book. Somebody came to me one time and says, oh, I had a prophetic dream. I said, what's that mean? A prophetic dream. I dreamed about the rapture. I said, oh, really? What, what, what did you learn that in that dream? That, oh, I just, it's just that the rapture is going to happen soon. I said, well, that's a pretty good dream because the Bible says that. So, you know, I said, the crazy thing is you didn't need that dream. It's in the Bible. You see how it works when you, you know. Anyway, um, your alarm bell should be going off when you hear people talk like that. You should already be, you know, like red alert, red alert. You know, there's, there's something wrong here. He... Well, you can, yeah, that's another noise you can hear. Who made that noise? Beep, beep. <laughs> he said most of his prophecies come true. <laughs> I, I just can't help it. That's hilarious. He said, he said most of his prophecies come true. I mean, think about how dumb that is. Anybody who knows the Bible knows that when a prophet says, most of my prophecies come true, he's a false prophet. It says, look, it, it continues. He said, most of his prophecies come true, but he's quick to admit he's been wrong at times. Can you imagine reading about Elijah or Isaiah or Jeremiah or John the Baptist? And he's out there preaching to people. He says, and you can know that this is the word of the Lord because most of the time I'm right. I get it wrong sometimes. So how are you supposed to know when? I'll tell you how you know. You test everything by the word of God. Amen? It almost reminds me of that commercial I see. I think it's Geico. Just okay is not okay. Amen. That's right. When it comes to being a prophet... So what does God say about this? Let's open our book to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 22 puts it literally in black and white, clear English. Everybody here speaks English. When a prophet says he gets it right most of the time, I went on Fox's website and I posted this verse in the comment section. Read it with me if you're there. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, Thou shalt not be afraid of him. And that's another way of saying it. Ignore him. Just ignore him. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, there, and I, I'm, and the, the reason why I'm not going there is because in this dispensation, we, wouldn't, we don't kill these people. In a,